Good morning, everybody. This is the First Lady Erica with Women of the Stars and my friend over here, Terry Smith. Good morning. My beautiful friend in the corner, Marvel Bliss. Hello, hello. She got her lipstick on, y'all. <laughs> oh, my God. And my handsome friend in the other corner, Mr. Jonathan Bailey. Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Or day. So, welcome to Women of the Stars, and today we are going to hang out with our beautiful friend, and that is Ingrid! Hi! Wait for everyone to see your first video, and I love the little cat that we chose for you. <laughs> the lady's so nice, we had to do it twice. <laughs> Ingrid is here and we're all just going to hang out and one thing I wanted to do was really briefly revisit what it is you do because you started out with sign language because you communicate differently and you several therapeutic methods and and you do a lot of volunteer work and I just didn't think we could skip over that and, and make that something small. I want you to go ahead and, and just go ahead and talk about that. Sure. So um, uh, I am a sign language interpreter and uh, I have been doing that for mm, like 25 years or so. Um, I work uh, as an independent contractor um, so I'm hired directly and I work um, through different agencies that um, secure sign language interpreters. Um, I also am a licensed massage therapist and a certified biofield tuner and a Reiki master teacher. And um, I am also a volunteer a light field foundation operator and I facilitate their meditations and their science meet spirit conversations on Sunday evenings. Um, and in conjunction with um, the light field, I also work with the son of the original engineer of the light field and um, in another state and uh, with his um, organization, with his business, um, Conscious Technologies. So I go to events with them and I talk about the technology and I talk about um, the transition of consciousness that we've had moving from Newtonian physics and which is still mostly taught in school. Um, and then I move them through uh, plasma physics, I'm sorry, uh, quantum physics and then plasma physics in terms of building blocks of the universe, how we can be more conscious creators um, how we can actually use our emotions um, and our attention, our awareness, our breath to be able to be more conscious manifestors in an understanding from this philosophy um, uh, of reality as we experience it being a reality that most of us have helped to co-create from a place of unconsciousness. And so conscious technologies and the light field were created um, as an endeavor to help humanity become more conscious beings, more conscious, intentional creators. Um, it was devised by an engineer by the name of Mark Newkirk, who um, on purpose remained somewhat um, anonymous <laughs> and uh, uh, off, off a lot of people's scope. The light field didn't advertise. Um, it was word of mouth for a good 10 years. Um, and then um, several years before his transition out of his physical human body, um, Mark went on a lecture circuit to talk about the science. And so we have those videos and we watch those videos together sort of as homework. And then we bring them up and we talk about them on alternate Sunday evenings. And then we alternate those with meditations using the light field technology in our world peace meditations. That's pretty much it.
Yeah, you're right. That's not very much. <laughs> like, wow, you just talked about rehanging the moon. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to ask like a Jonathan, Terry, Marvel, you had something? Yes. Um, so what would you say the biggest difference between quantum and the plasm plasmatics would be? Um, I, I think of plasma physics, um, which is what the light field is working in, as, as the most fundamental building block. So it's literally the fabric of everything. So the, you want, if you, some people are going to call it God, some people are going to call it great spirit, some people are going to call it plasma, <laughs> um, but the conscious energy that has created everything my understanding through personal experience um, with ayahuasca ceremony and watching and the experiences I have had my entire life and then listening to Mark and talking to Mark when he was still here in his physical body, um, my understanding is that initially we have a light field, right? And a light field is just like a blank canvas. It's not actually light. It's like when you look at the night sky, it's black. There's nothing there. It is nothingness. And so you have an idea, right? You have a thought, you have an idea that you begin imbuing into reality. We're, so we're working with plasma here. We're working with idea. And then as human beings, we have this amazing divine ability as we are an amalgamation of many species, of many galactic species, we have a very unique and powerful manifestation uh, capability at our fingertips, right? Because we are not these bodies. These bodies are our vehicles for our consciousness. So our bodies exist within our consciousness, not the other way around. Our consciousness isn't in our minds. Um, it's the other way around. So we're working um, with the technology. This is the most amazing technology. This right here, this living, breathing, conscious vehicle, right? Imbued with spirit. We're divine. We're sacred. Um, when we pass, our bodies lose weight. <laughs> So there is something to consciousness, right? There is something to spirit. There is a divine spirit that animates us if we're living. <laughs> if we're living, breathing beings, there is a divine consciousness that animates us. And so, so when, we, when we have this idea that we are intending to create and we're working with our emotions and we're working with intent, we have amazing capabilities. So we're working from that plasma, from that fabric, literally. Imagine, imagining, you know, you want to create clothing, a clothing line. You're, you initially have raw fabric. And then you're imposing your idea into that fabric. And you're creating with that fabric into, right? What's going on here is waves of information, frequencies, right? There's constant frequencies everywhere. We're being, we're, we're swimming in frequency. So specific frequencies and then information that's carried on those frequencies begins to, from the plasmic field in quantum physics, it's wave and matter begin to take formation. And then we, we work into the physical into the physical universe that Newtonian physics, try, Newtonian physics tries to examine, but because they were not working with a fundamental understanding of the building blocks of physical matter, they believed that to be everything that there was when it's only, you know, a piece of the information. There's so much more going on. All of the multiple dimensions were existing all in the same, you know, point of time, space, zero point. So uh, did that answer your question? Yes, it okay. did. Thank you so much. And I, I love this. This is right up my alley. So um, 
when you're talking about moving from the quantum where everything's a wave, a, a wave or a singular point and you move into the plasmas where you're actually, it's your intention behind the point and the wave that's creating it. I love this stuff. So yeah. um, this is amazing. Um, yeah. So, so, so if, if we're distracted mm -hmm. and we're stressed and we're fearful or we're angry, we're frustrated, we're anxious, right? People are always just like, raise your frequency, raise your frequency. Well, anxiety is a high frequency. We don't want to just raise the frequency. We want to raise a coherent frequency. We wanna be grounded and coherent and healed from our wounds. Because if we're reactive, that's what we're helping to create more of. Because we are so powerful, as we are being distracted, as we're being thrown off our game, as we're being poisoned in every way that you can imagine, right? Our air, our food, our water, like there, it's just intentional. It's an intentional disruption. But um, I feel like if we could just tap into the fact, they have to work so hard at throwing us off our game because we are so amazing, because we are so powerful that when we work through that trauma, the thousands of years of trauma, not just this lifetime, not just the stuff we experienced as kids, not just the stuff we're experiencing as, as humanity, as we work through this trauma and understand, comprehend, not understand, we don't want to stand under anybody or anything. We want to stand with, we want to have an inner standing or even an overstanding of the fact that every moment gives us, every single moment gives us another opportunity to make a different choice than what we have made before. Did that choice before bring us a better outcome, something that we desire more. What is it that you desire? Alex Collier talks about this all the time. What do you want? Stop focusing on what you don't want because you're feeding your life force energy to what you don't want. Now, I don't mean pretend it's not there. <laughs> That's not what I mean. But I mean, if you can comprehend the idea that there's frequency and that information is carried along that frequency, right? So a, a good example is radios, right? Radio waves. I, I'm sure that everybody that's watching that that is watching this is familiar and and comfortable with the idea of multiple dimensions. Um, they're comfortable with the unseen, right? They're not existing in a way that like I have to see it to believe it. I have to be able to touch it for it to be real. There is more to reality than Newtonian physics, than what the physical eye can see, unless you're more sensitive and then your physical eye can actually perceive more dimensional information. Our brains are wired to see this stuff. But if people could begin to open to this idea that there's wave and frequency and that the emotion that's gonna come through us is really, really, really temporary. When we see something that gets our goat or that throws fear in us or that you know makes us angry or makes us anxious, if we could just allow ourselves to feel it without beating ourselves up, without judging it, without creating a story around it, just feel the feeling until it starts to subside and then parent ourselves in the way that either we weren't parented or in a way that we wish we had been parented, holding ourselves, allowing ourselves to feel whatever we feel and understand, comprehend that nothing that we feel is wrong. It is what we felt. It is a natural reaction. If you're angry, well, it's probably because, right? Something's been done that isn't okay. Something's been violated. Let yourself feel that. But when you react from that, if you react in that emotion, in that reaction, you are helping to recreate more of that in reality. Mm. However, if you can ride that wave and allow it to move through and out, 
then you can be more conscious and open to universal guidance, open to the guidance of your higher self, open to the guidance of spirit, open to the guidance of the creator, or however you perceive more aware, more intelligent guidance, rather than lower ego reactiveness. All of us are there. All of us feel reactive about something and many things. There's nothing wrong with that. We're still trying to get into understanding, comprehending the amazing capabilities of these vessels. So my hope is that in our lifetime, we are seeing many, many, many people move through this level of maturity to become more conscious to comprehend that many things that have been done, not just again in this lifetime, but for thousands of years, to human beings, to sentient animals, to the planet as a being have not been okay, but most of it has happened because we have been unconscious. As we become more conscious, as we become more open, as we become more heart-centered and allow that recognition and that remembrance that all of us are connected to the divine. Some of us chose to separate ourselves from the divine to learn something. But we are in a time period right now where, you know, our universe, our, our, if you imagine the Milky Way galaxy, right, as this spinning, spinning body, <laughs> this spinning consciousness, we are moving into areas of time space space time that have higher frequencies than we have ever encountered before people are saying we're also moving closer to the center of our milky way galaxy but those higher frequencies are not going to allow what's going to happen is what we're seeing now the destruction and the dismantling of all of those oppressive systems all of those systems and consciousnesses that originally agreed to cut themselves off from source so that we could learn because we're all connected. However, with the consciousness that exists that is finite in comparison to that which is infinite, the finite is going to peter itself out. So because it's creating more for itself of the destruction and the enslavement, it's going to knock itself out, right? This is a sort of why like we don't really, if, if we are not already in, all, all of us are sort of in our assignments. Some of us haven't yet woken up to what our assignment is. Some of us have been aware of our assignments for a long time. But as we, as we, tune into that higher intelligence that many of us cannot comprehend because we're only looking from here. We've got blinders on, many of us. But as those blinders come off and we start to wake up our own DNA, right? They've already photographed the, the third and fourth strands of it. We know that it's waking up. We know that the kids are coming in with more of it. We know that we're, we're becoming more aware of the other dimensions that exist in the same space that we are in. We just haven't perceived them, many of us have not perceived them. And so we may, as we start to encounter them and, and witness or perceive their greater capabilities from a place of co more coherence, we may, and, in, and historically, have assigned, you know, godlike status to them as opposed to brother-sister status right? Long lost brother, sister, I finally get to see you again. Hello, welcome home family. But this idea that when we can just breathe, allow ourselves to feel what's coming up, and then on the other side of it, make a more informed choice. We don't have to recreate where we've been. We don't have to spend time in those stories. We can create new because we really are just at the precipice of comprehending the amazing things that we're capable of with intent, with consciousness from here, right? The field that this, we know this from heart math, with the field that our heart creates can be measured. I think they've said like 25 feet out 
Our minds only create this field that's like, you know, a foot or two. That's it. This is so much more powerful. It is so much more in alignment with spirit consciousness, great spirit, mother, father, God, God consciousness, right? That's where we're able to really, really tune in. And so as we develop those abilities, we naturally become less reactive and we allow other people and all of us have turns being reactive, right? Because we, because all of us get triggered for different reasons, but to not beat people up for their reactiveness, to comprehend where it's coming from and why they've got wounds that maybe aren't my wounds, or maybe they are my wounds and that's why I'm getting so triggered. So, so, so allowing people their reactions, because they're not, most of them ignorant they're very real and they and they have their stories but we can choose to play in those stories or not we can just send them love because love is where we're going back i mean that's the you know the golden age of enlightenment the thousand year um area era that we're moving into the age of aquarius that we're moving into it really is about understanding comprehending understanding overstanding withstanding that everything we have is inside we are individually not as intelligent as we are collectively there is more strength in the diversity that exists because each and every one of us are fractals just fractals of god of that consciousness and so the more we can the or the less reactive we can be to comprehend that each of us has a little piece of the puzzle and that we're here to experience a lot and we have experienced a lot you know when everybody's talking about like oh let's go back to atlantis let's go back to atlantis i don't want to go back to atlantis i don't want to go back there i don't want to recreate what we are capable of which has almost been recreated right in underground there, because there's the earth in the earth on the earth and around the earth realities of what's been happening and what is capable when we sever our minds from our hearts atlantis was that experience yes technological advance but when that's severed from your ability to feel compassion we are capable of doing horrific things to one another when we are numbed when we are harmed we grow a hardness we can grow this hardness that allows us to become numb to harming to harming others and so attempting to have compassion for why people may have been there uh but to hold us each and ourselves mostly accountable to letting go <laughs> and to trusting the universe and to connecting with each other and seeing the light in each other's eyes and i talk about it in terms of like do i have my god goggles on if i'm reactive and i'm angry or i'm fearful it's because oh my god goggles have slipped off because when my god goggles are on i can see things from a higher dimensional perspective in that each and every person is living out what you know, the way that, who says, I don't know who said this first, but we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. So our frames of reference, our histories, our programming, <laughs> the way that we have been programmed greatly influences the way we perceive what's happening in the third dimensional and third dimensional reality. If there is a way for us to arrest that, right press the pause button for just a moment and hold ourselves and allow ourselves whatever reaction we have and then that higher intelligence can come in and 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 assist us in what's the next piece that is going to bring everyone here everyone that's impacted more light love and bliss and freedom in each and every moment we have that choice but so many of us are so caught in stories, in theories, that we 
forget to just be here now with what is happening here now in this moment and some it, why people get stuck there makes absolute sense the programming was intelligent but it wasn't the infinite intelligence right it had this idea that it was going to snuff us out that it was going to use our life force energy to feed itself because it believes it's not connected to source because everything that remembers its connection to source does not have to feed off anyone or anything's life force energy so the more we remember that we have that connection to go within, to stay with that, um, spend our time, right? In the third dimension, the way that we understand time, time has value to spend our time exploring the universe from within. Uh, and... Um, Try to remember to put your God goggles on really early in the morning and keep them on your face. Make sure they're there. And uh, and then we all just have an easier time and we all get to really support each other in our uniqueness. We don't have to all be the same. You know, difference is fabulous. It is why this planet is so amazing. It is why this planet is so amazing. We all have so many gifts. And as we shift from here into here and then allowing all of that to flow that constant connection we're connected to the heart of mother earth we're connected to the heart of pachamama energetically physically we're connected to the sun we're connected to the grand central sun at the middle of the milky way galaxy we are then there through there connected to source each and every one of us. So, yeah. I kind of tan went on a tangent and I forgot the question. So, <laughs> do you have another question? <laughs> well, I think Terry had a question. Yeah, but I, I, I know, like, we, this is going to take, like, 17 segments to talk to Ingrid because it's like a book of the world, you know, like, you know, reading the secret so, book of knowledge or something. So but, I was, but I also, I also, like, I, I've been, I've been reading voraciously since I was very young. Many of the things that I shared with you are not my original ideas. Well, that's it. But it's like. That's what I was saying. It's like, it sounds like the secret book of knowledge and like, <laughs> like, ooh, it's just beautiful waves. And I don't know, my face, I've just felt like a little happy Buddha over here. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. My head is nodding. I'm smiling. But I know Terry, I don't know if your question was answered in there or did you have... Uh, well uh, okay, I'll I'll put it out, and I, yeah, I, I I was just going to ask you about the light fit, light field technologies, mm -hmm. and how um, how do they like what it's it's is it it's a sound technology? How can it bring people to this place of 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 connecting with their their God source? Like how how does that type of program help? A person to develop um so the light field um was created and all uh, all of all conscious technology under you know ross newkirk's conscious technology's name and also the light field ross helped his dad build the light field it, the community kind of helped uh ross build the light field but it is a it, it's a unit um that isn't connected right um to the internet or anything like that. It is a device that uses sacred geometries, nested geometry, light frequency and sound frequency to create a coherent field. So the light field isn't really doing anything to you. What is It is doing something for you. It is holding this massive bubble of coherence, a coherence that we at one time experienced but it's been a really long time since we've been able to be there a lot. Um, with everything that has gone on 
for generations and generations, we've become pretty incoherent. And that's what I was referring to when I said we've mostly created from a place of incoherence, from disruption, distortion, programming, um, reactiveness, all of that, the, the negative emotions, um, so to speak, that when our bodies lay down in that coherence, a natural reaction for the body is just to like go like, <sighs> because it just feels so life affirming. It just feels so life affirming. And as your body relaxes, as the body de-stresses, what we know from the last like 110 years of plasma physics and, and quantum physics experiments is that when the body, Mark in his video says this frequently, when the body is de-stressed, when the body is not in a stress state, we are capable of healing almost anything or anything. He says anything. We can heal anything that comes up. We are able to create the things that make our hearts sing, but we have to be unstressed. Now, unstressed was our natural state ages ago, but the, when we fell from fifth into third, when the earth fell from fifth dimension into third dimension, and all of the things that have happened since that time have created a place where it is, you know, we don't, most modern, postmodern <laughs> humans, most human beings right now don't necessarily have the time and the capability to spend, you know, several months or several years meditating in a cave. We are forced um, into um, having to worry about our subsistence, having to worry about rent, mortgages, food on the table, car payments, insurance, right? All of that, you know, taxes, which is a whole other thing, right? That, that we can not talk about today, but um, those programs <laughs> uh, keep us off our game. It, it keeps us in a state of perpetual stress because then we're creating more of what they want. <laughs> We're creating our own demise. We're creating our own illness. We're creating our own dis-ease. So in that coherence, we're finally relaxing and we're able to commune with our higher self. We're able to hear or listen or tune into our higher selves. So everybody that uses the light field has a different experience. I mean, I have a kind of different experience every time I go in. My body absolutely is like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this time that I get to be in here. Um, and now I get to do my work in a conscious way. What is it that I desire? What is it that I desire to be shown? What is it that I'm trying to achieve, right? And the stories that people have about what they've experienced as a result of the light field are really, I mean, as varied as, as, as humans come. Um, however, what we all have in common is that is, is, is a, is an, a taste of that place that deep, deep, deep meditation brings us to. If you're an avid meditator, you can get to that place. You can achieve those, um, that communion with yourself and with your higher self to really achieve that zero point, um, to, to tap into those frequencies that allow you to tap into the Akashic record, the fabric of the universe, the plasma of the universe. As a creator, that's, it, that's when and where we encourage people when they're using the technology. What is it, you know, think about what makes your heart sing. What is it that you most desire to bring into fruition? If that desire or those desires, as many as you want, are in the highest good of everyone impacted, then the life field is going to help you bring that into fruition. That's going to happen. But if it's not in your highest good, right? If you're jumping the gun, if your sole contract is to come in here and experience this thing because you want to figure out this thing, 
then the light field isn't going to make that thing go away for you because you chose that thing. <laughs> um, it may help you gain some insight about that thing so that you can then consciously decide, I've learned all I want to learn about this. I want something else here. But, but the light field specifically is just about that field of coherence so that you're tuning in with your higher self you're tuning in and some people just go in to relax. Other people go in to consciously manifest. Um, and, and so like on Sunday nights when we do the meditation, everybody gets a remote session. Um, we have the globe in there. We're doing a world peace meditation, you know, for every, every being inside, on and around the planet. Um, sending out that love frequency with specific people we're naming who need healing or people in our lives who are struggling, um, but with the intent to help us all up level. So that's what the that's what the light field does. It doesn't do anything to you. It just provides a space for you to do what you want to do. You you silenced you you muted yourself, sweetie. I would say, okay, thank you. That was that. Uh, <laughs> so that was a great answer to the question, Terry. You're like, I got yeah. it. I, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so jo Jonathan, um, I was going to ask you if you had any um, questions or comments so far. Mm -hmm. So I'll do comment first. Uh you know, it's just riding that blissful wave, hearing her just weave everything together. And, you know, you know, at times I thought I was like, am I, you know, I know I like to go on my tangents as well and just, <laughs> and go, go on those spiritual journeys. And it's like, is there somebody else that can go on those journeys too? I know Erica and, and you know, Stephanie and Terry, we all have great conversations and, and uh, journeys, but Ingrid, you're, really taking everybody along on on such a, a journey to see everything you know it just right. in the way you're you're coming at multiple angles with each of the questions it's just it's poetic um so you the light field technology uh businesses it's so basically you do the meditations on on zoom mm -hmm. or yeah and or do you have like contractors out to other People. No, it's a it's a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit organization. Um, so I volunteer for them. I volu I'm a volunteer operator. I run the tech. Um, and what we have in Lightfield, the technology, we have three technologies there currently. There's the Lightfield, um, there's Grace, and then there's a Cohere meditation map. Um, the Lightfield and Grace were created um, initially, the initial ideas were Mark Newkirk's ideas, and then the Cohere Meditation Mat um, is uh, was created by Ross Newkirk. Okay. Um, and so each of the technologies use, like I said earlier, all of the technologies use geometry and frequency, well, the frequencies of geometry, light, and sound in different combinations. And you don't have to hear, this is the thing that I love about this tag, you don't have to mm -hmm. hear the music to reap the benefits. Um, so uh, in the way that the light field creates this coherence and works in the etheric realms, um, grace, when you, st you stand on grace, in light field, you're laying inside, inside light field. It's this like almost globe of geometry that um, we crank open. So it's just a frame of wood mm -hmm. that we crank open and we have stairs that you can go in and lie inside. And then we pull the stairs away and crank it closed. But, you know, generally speaking, people don't get like claustrophobic or anything because you can, you can crawl out, you can stick your arms through. Um, it's just a frame of wood mm -hmm. um, around the table um, or bed that you're lying on. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's working in the etheric grace when you stand you stand on grace you walk up a set of stairs and stand on a plate of glass and if you look down you're looking through layers of geometry and then you're looking at a plate of that's shining light up um and then there's geometry on the ceiling above you um 
that grace works with the um, energy bodies. So the chakra system um, and the meridian system um, for alignment. And then the cohere mat works with the physical body to release um, density and trauma from the body, stress from the body. Um, when you're laying down on the mat, there's a console that has nested geometries in it that kind of rotate and that makes like this wave. And then we run that wave along electrical line and it runs through a mat that you're, so you're laying down on this denim mat and it has 96 tiles sewn into it. And those tiles are made of um, mostly like elite shungite and then lots of other minerals, crystals and stones uh, mixed with a non-toxic epoxy. So it's running through, and I believe there are also speakers in the mat to help the music run and the frequencies run through. And then there's like a metallic material on the sides and at the bottom for your feet, for your hands and forearms to lay on. So as it kind of washes through, it's helping to release the, the density and the trauma from the body, and then it sends it to ground. Mm -hmm. So it goes to ground. Um, when I'm on the mat, I have lots of, um, lots of like physical, like, you know, releases <laughs> of energy, you know, like my, my knee will tweak or, um, I have had experiences, um, because of my history, there are times when I don't let stuff go. It stays, it's, it's hard for me to give myself permission to just release it, let the story go, let the, let it go. So there have been times where it's built up so intensely that it is felt physically uncomfortable. Um, and then I've had to just express like release already. And then my body was like, we'll do this like massive, like whomp, and I'll like come up off the mat and then it'll release. And then I just have like, you know, two weeks of absolute bliss, you know, until, you know, the next layer comes up. Um, but I, yeah, we all, all of the people that are connected to, to the conscious technologies and it, it's a small, like it's a family, it's a family and a few friends. That's, that's what we are. Everything is handmade. Um, everything is made by people that we know, um, and, uh, uh, put together, you know, like the shells come from a lumber family that the family is known forever and all the wood is local wood and things of that nature. But we're all, we all use the technology constantly, but um, you need someone to run you through. None of the technology is tech that you can really use on your own. Um, so we need each other. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's quite a, a nice, amazing technology that you have there. Yeah. There's also something called a core harmonizer, mm -hmm. which um, I have, and it was playing, but because when I was first in the waiting room, there was a, a sign that said, please, you know, mute your music. Um, but I have a core harmonizer uh, and the core harmonizer kind, they kind of, they're, you know, a little bit smaller than R2D2, but they're made of wood and you can look down into them and see the layers of geometry and they're created, they, they create a field. Mm -hmm. So an information field, plasma physics information field that we've embedded with 528 and 432 frequencies. Okay. So they're designed for businesses and homes to bring harmony into space. And, um, you don't have to hear them to feel them. They're really amazing. And it just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I have one playing almost all the time in my home. And when people visit, they're just like, oh, I want to. So those them. are available on, online? You can. So, yeah, yeah, the technologies that Ross makes, um, he makes a technology called the Quantum Flow, which is, I guess you could call it a portable, a portable light field but it's not really portable. They're designed uh, for healing centers. Um, and um, like it takes, you know, <laughs> several hours to, to put together. Um, and it takes several of us because they're the, the, the technology, there are pieces of it that are really heavy that require several people to lift it. Um, so it's not really a unit that you can easily move. It takes a day to disassemble and reassemble. Um, but the stuff that's more mobile, like the core harmonizers, 
um, the Cohere meditation mats and the, their Z sleep mats um, are, uh, in addition to like their cell phone harmonizers and their body harmonizers and their computer harmonizers, like they sell um, stuff to transmute EMF um, stuff. So their tech reverses the spin of man-made technology so that it's not harming you and so that your device isn't working harder and exposing you to more EMF because it's because the signal has been blocked. Um, yeah, so they do a lot of stuff and they're amazing. Um, and I, for the longest time, the light field really, um, it was the first tech that I was exposed to and um, uh, it really shifted things dramatically for me. Um, when I started using the light field technology, um, I would say that I was much more of a um, pessimist. Mm -hmm. I was very, very pessimistic and I was really um, discontent uh, with um, what humanity did from a place of unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had little tolerance for that. Um, but I believe using the technology um, has helped me shift into really being much more of an optimist, um, much less reactive, uh, much more grounded and present and in, in my power in the sense that um, if I'm reactive, it doesn't take very long for my higher self to be like, okay, what you doing? <laughs> Do you want to keep doing this? Um, maybe this is what's going on. Maybe you don't know the whole story. Maybe you're creating a story about why that just happened. And that's not why that just happened. Um, so, so it's allowed me like elbow room with what I experience in the third dimension in a way that's been really self-empowering. Um, and because it did that for me and I have talked about like I talk about how amazing this stuff is and I rented some of the units initially um, because I couldn't afford to purchase them that eventually Ross was just like, you know, I've actually sold units because of the stuff you've said. Do you want to come work for me? <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I, uh, I I don't work for I mean, they they're in another state. Um, I don't work for him in that sense, but I do um, I do work for him when there are events. Um, or, um, if he's got like a bunch of orders that he needs to complete, like I'll go and I will do some work with him, helping him assemble, um, to get the units completed and then to get, to get them out. Um, yeah, I just, I, I love their stuff and I really, I work out of the healing center two days a week that his wife runs. So I operate the tech in Rhode Island there, they're in Rhode Island. Um, I work out of there two days a week doing biofill tuning. Um, and, um, and then I run the tech as well when I'm there. So in that sense, I do work for him, but yeah. Awesome. Um... So Marvel, did you have um, a, a different question? concerning the last video or in a comment on anything that we're doing right now yeah